the cleaning for the mold becomes very important and uh, very essential uh, to choose the right machine or the right supplier. Hi everybody, this is Jelly. Welcome to Jelly Talk. It has been a long time that I haven't updated my channel with new videos. There are, you know, for many of the fans who is following my channel, and I'm very sorry uh, because I'm studying some new projects and uh, I'm trying to bring deeper and professional contents to you. So uh, my team gave me some topics that looks attractive, but I don't think we I can bring a substantial context to you, contents to you. So I didn't I didn't came to any video, but. Now, finally, we came up with a new topic about laser cleaning on molds, which is a big um, application, a big share of a cleaning market. Mold actually is a very basic production equipment in every daily industrial production. Uh, for high precision molds, like the, the accuracy can go less than 0.02 millimeters, which can be used in aerospace, um, high precision production. Because with molds, you can go high productivity, you can repeat. Like uh, you, with the molds, uh, you can also uh, make daily used things like uh, our electronics and uh, that you can find everything in your daily life, which can be produced by molds. Because with molds, you can high frequency repeat, a high cycle, a very fast cycle time production with the same repetition com uh, accuracy. So when we talk about mold, because it's like printing something, you put things inside the mold and you produce one by one uh, with many, many pieces. So cleaning, when you, uh, there is high temperature inside the mold when you, during your production. So it's very easy to get polluted or dirty of the molds, which will affect the next production, the accuracy and the cleanliness of the products. So the cleaning for the molds becomes very important and uh, very essential in the daily production. For cleaning the molds, which is different with we cleaning other stuff, because when you cleaning it, there is very important you don't you don't hurt it or you don't destroy it because it's a high precision part. Um, you need to take off the dirt and the pollutes very precisely, and you protect, you sustain the same accuracy of the mold. So there are three points that you need to guarantee during the cleaning of the molds. First, you shouldn't uh, destroy or hurt the coating of the mold. For most of the high precision molds, there is coating of CR or other kind of uh, special coating for each production procedure needed. You need to be careful that you don't take off this coating during your cleaning. You just precisely take off the dirt and the pollutes. Second, you cannot increase the roughness of the molds. For some of the molds, like for production of the shoes, there is uh, certain uh, shapes in our shoes bottoms, and you shouldn't increase the roughness of that, which means you cannot uh, increase the shapes or you, you destroy or change the shapes of, of that uh, very tiny things inside. The third, which is the, you shouldn't scratch or make a uh, uh, obvious hurts on the molds, which I think is quite similar to the point two. But in some cases, what we say it is a separate point, because if you make very uh, minor scratch, which you probably didn't see by your eyes, but when you injection the plastic inside and when you have the product, you will see the scratch on the surface of the product. Normally after the production with the molds, people need to clean the molds after the, the end of the day. The traditional way of cleaning the mold is very complicated. Uh, there are many ways, sandblasting, chemical, or ultrasonic. But those ways are very time consuming or you need people to take off the mold and to clean it and put it back. Those are traditional ways. So besides that you need to take the molds off, that's very inconvenient. Most people doesn't want to do that. With the online cleaning, now are mainly um, ice, uh, ice cleaning, ice, ice blasting and laser cleaning. Let's compare these two ways. The ice blasting cleaning, you need to buy the dry ice uh, and you, you consume dry ice every time, so it's a consumable, it's a cost. And you need to save it in a 
minus 75 degrees because it's a liquid and it's very low temperature. And after the dry ice blasting, the, because we know that mold working in the 180 degrees temperature. So with the dry ice cleaning, you decrease the temperature and when you uh, put it in the production again, you need to warm up. In this temperature going down and going up, you uh, time consuming and also energy. You need electricity to warm up. So this is the issue for dry ice blasting. Uh, for laser cleaning, um, you don't need, uh, you just buy the laser and you don't need many consumables every time. And you don't, you don't decrease the temperature, so the temperature always stay the same. Uh, but you need to choose the right machine. Without the right machine, you probably sometimes you hurt the molds. So this is the point. But if you have the right parameters, the right machine, it's a perfect way to do the mold cleaning. So laser cleaning has been proved to be a very effective way of cleaning the molds. The only defect is that to choose the right machine and the price. But you know, with these two years, I've been making this video and I got many inquiries. You know, the price of this cleaner has been dropping dramatically. Like, you know, for some models, like 50% less. So with the price going down, become more and more affordable. So this technology can really be uh, large, I mean, widely spreaded or used in mold cleaning. So I want people, you know, when you're watching this video, be aware of that this will be a new trend. So for laser cleaning on molds, how to check the quality? There are many uh, ways to define the laser cleaning quality on molds. First is the cleanliness, because we want to clean, because we want to take off the dirt and pollutes. So one is to import and basic is that how clean you clean it after laser cleaning. Uh, when we see by our eyes, it's not uh, the, you know, precise. So normally we use this dyeing pen. Uh, for example, this is a, for example, this is a piece of the mold and, and we use laser cleaning here and this is not, not cleaning yet. So we use this dyeing pen and it has many values. The higher value, this one is 40, the higher value that shows uh, you check the, the higher cleanliness. Normally you write in this way, like when you write over the, uh, the cleaning, after cleaning, you, this is successful. And this you haven't cleaned it yet, doesn't show, doesn't stay. So this is the way to check the cleanliness. So after we make sure that it's completely cleaned, achieve the cleanliness that we want, the second step is to check if there is any hurt or destroy or scratch on the molds. Uh, first, we need to see by our eyes. We check if there are any obviously that we can see by our eyes. Of course, this is not enough because some very micro hurts that you can only put it on a microscope. So for some scenarios, we will pick or during our setting the parameters, we have to test. During the test, we put the mold under the 50 times microscope to check. So after checking the cleanliness and the surface hurt of the mold, then we put the mold in the production. The final test is the after production of the products, we put the products under the microscope to check if there is any unwanted scratches or shapes or, or things in microscope also to, to enlarge it and to check if everything fine, this is the uh, everything final testing complete, then this mode or these parameters or this machine can put in the production for cleaning. So the last part is that for uh, people who like you overseas, that if you want to choose the right model of machine for cleaning some specified modes, some shoe modes, these are biscuit modes and some other modes, you know. Sometimes you can provide the mold to us. I mean, you can get one of the sample shipping here and then we can make the test or to your suppliers that who can make the test and then send it back and then you check if everything okay. Uh, but before that, if you want to choose the most suitable suppliers, you can simply focus on two points. First, uh, because it's difficult to, if you cannot provide the sample, I mean, then is you can, you can choose um, the aluminium 
the natural oxidation of aluminium, which is very similar to this kind of dirt on the molds, because these are formed by high temperature, high pressure, because it's always for the molds you, you inject and you squeeze it. So it's, those are very sticky because they create it in high temperature, high pressure. It's difficult to, you find, I mean, in the field naturally. Uh, so you can use um, aluminium uh, oxida oxida oxidation. If the laser can clean the oxidation layer on the aluminium, because which is uh, the most similar thing to this high temperature created. So that means that the machine has strong cleaning ability. And then second is that um, no, I mean, no hurt. Uh, cleaning, which means if you most of this um, you handheld because the mold is on the production line, so it's difficult to go auto automation because there are many intricate uh, corners or small um, shapes inside. So your laser need to go really many angles, 360 angles every way. So you have to guarantee that this machine. When you clean it many times, you probably, the operators will do the cleaning um, many times over a point. So you need to guarantee that the laser doesn't hurt. So this is the second point that uh, when you handheld the cleaning gun and, and you work over some times in a mold and it doesn't have different effects, which means that you didn't hurt the base material. So these two points, first you need to strong cleaning ability for very sticky uh, glues or things um, and then second is that during some vibration or out of focus then you you have the constant cleaning effects so for the sec uh, second point we pointed out now is the non-destructive cleaning how to check it i mean for uh, common people that you you, we normally we see after cleaning we we make picture videos or we see the workpiece that there is no uh, different color or there is no obviously scratch or different um, curves or shapes on on the metal and then you need professional equipments microscroper dyeing pen and many other things you know uh, to choose the right machine or the right supplier they need to equip with all the necessary um, uh, equipment which means that they already tested or during their sample making testing they already checked every value the rough lease and um, the, the the structure of the metal with under microscope and many things so this is very important so the above is that what we can say about mold cleaning why the trend going to be really ramping up of laser cleaning instead of the dry ice blasting and how to choose the ideal laser cleaning machine for your molds and if you have other questions or you have you, you have new ideas please share with us and send uh, send send email to me join the discussion thank you and i really appreciate that many people send me message or emails sharing their experience with the laser cleaning technology uh, recently a German fans, I don't know if he's our customer or not, but he shared with me that he puts water or oil on the surface will better clean, better help cleaning with the laser. So this is very interesting. We really welcome and appreciate that people share this experience with us. And, and the next topic, because recently I've been very frequently asked by people uh, how to choose a Gaussian mold or a top hat mold for the laser cleaning. For this uh, wood cleaning or for rust cleaning, how they always want to match the gaussing or top head on each application and during when they choose the machine. So on next uh, topic, we will focus on um, the difference between gaussing and top head and how to choose it according to your applications.